Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of California, Berkeley, the number one public university in the world. Go Bears. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm a fourth year bio uh, studying mostly synthetic biology at UC Berkeley, um, and I play bass in my free time. Hey, I'm Arnav. I'm also a fourth year studying synthetic and computational biology, but focusing in computational neuroscience. Um, I also used to play the bass, but my current fun fact is that I know all 100 species of whales off the top of my head. But we'll be your tour guides today, and we know there are many different virtual tours online, but we wanted to highlight some of the spaces on campus important to bioengineers that you may not get to see elsewhere. You'll notice we'll be covering a large diversity of buildings. As you may have heard before, and will certainly hear many, many times in the future, bioengineering is a very diverse field, and fittingly, bioengineers are involved with research all over the place, including many places we won't be able to cover today. We're starting off our tour here as a site of the future Bakar Bioingenuity Hub. In recognition of Berkeley as a leader in life science and biotech research, the hub will serve as a life science incubator, providing state-of-the-art lab space and a plethora of office space for faculty and student startup researchers so these aspiring entrepreneurs can test, develop, and grow their game-changing ideas. The Bioingenuity Hub will be located just south of the main campus in Wuhan Phi Hall, a National Register building and City of Berkeley designated landmark. Most famously, it is the former home of the University of Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive, now located downtown. While it is still under construction, the building is expected to open in the next year or two, and we'll be here waiting for all of you and your brand new innovations. All right, so welcome to Stanley Hall. Uh, this is the hub for multidisciplinary research and teaching involving biological sciences and engineering. Uh, this is also sort of where, where the, the, the heart and the home of the bioway department really is. So here, bioway freshmen get their, their first exposure to the field, Professor Johnson's introductory course in the main auditorium, which incidentally is, is where you guys would be too if, if the competition were held in person this year. Stanley Hall is home to about 40 research labs with core facilities, including the Bio Biomolecular Nanotechnology Center, a tissue engineering facility, a specialized optics suite, and a regional NMR facility. It's also the home to the QB3 garage at Berkeley, which is sort of this biotech incubator sort of designed to support startups. It provides access to lab equipment and spaces for wet lab research for new companies that may not necessarily have an established facility just yet. On another note, both the Kumbai Lab and the Kumar Lab are located in Stanley Hall, and I believe that you guys will have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the research that they're doing on investigating aging tumor cells in the central nervous system later today in the lab tours and Q&A sessions. Uh, personally, I do believe that both labs are quite fascinating, so I very highly recommend that you guys check them out if you have the opportunity to do so. Now lastly, right by the entrance, we have Yali's Cafe. This is basically just like a nice little space for studying an overpriced coffee if you need a quick pick-me-up in between classes uh, pre-pandemic. Unfortunately, it is closed at the moment, to my knowledge, but I digress. Next, we'll head right on over to the Bechtel Engineering Center, located up ahead, just a short walk from Stanley. Bechtel houses a multitude of resources for engineering students, such as the Center for Access to Engineering Excellence, which offers peer-to-peer -peer tutoring and the Engineering Student Services, where students can book an appointment to meet with their academic advisor anytime. Located right beneath Bechtel is Kresge Library, a favorite spot for engineering students from all disciplines because of its spacious study area and designated room for naps. During midterms and final season, the library is always packed, 
but with a choice of over 20 libraries located around campus, even one that's underground, it's not hard to find another great study spot. These steps lead up to Bechtel Terrace, where students and faculty gather during lunchtime and in between classes. There is a small cafe on the terrace that sells great chocolate chip cookies, which can be enjoyed while taking in the beautiful view of campus. All right, so this is Soda Hall. Uh, this is the computer science building on campus. Now, it may not necessarily seem like it from the outside, but Soda actually has about seven floors with, with classrooms, labs, and offices extending from the top floor that you see there um, all the way down to, to the underground. So now, Soda, it was sort of designed to encourage these casual interactions among students and faculty. There's a, there's a student lounge actually right outside of these faculty office spaces just to, to encourage students to be able to, to, to talk very informally, very casually with their professors. Um, not only that though, but the labs and the classrooms are, are they're all like grouped together with this sort of intent of, of promoting these collaborative approaches to computer science, uh, you know, problem solving. Now, right next to Soda Hall is the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. Um, so just like Soda, in fact, it's designed to be very open air, which sort of lends itself to a very communal sense in the building. Um, now, as this is a, a, a formal ma maker space, uh, it's, it's naturally become a bit of a favorite among, well, <laughs> makers, uh, understandably, and, and engineering students. So now, if you have a maker's pass, then you, you actually have access to this, this wide variety of, of fabrication and prototyping tools, including you know, metal cutting, uh, wood cutting, acrylic, laser cutting, uh, 3D printing, you know, and probably most importantly, the, the Jacob staff, who are always open and, and willing to help support your creative endeavors, which is really great. Here is the Valley Life Sciences Building, also known as VLSB. VLSB is the second largest academic structure in the nation, covering an area of roughly 2.5 acres and a height of 5 stories. When it was originally built, it was actually the largest academic structure in the nation. However, after a contentious battle, that title now belongs to Harvard. Just north of the building is one of Berkeley's famous tourist spots, the Echo Circle. If you stand in the middle of the center line and speak directly into it, you might hear some funky reverberations. VLSB is home to our biology departments, including the Biosciences Library, four research museums, invertebrate zoology, botany, paleontology, and entomology, and a plethora of research labs, like the one I work in. My research in this building is with the Polypedal Lab with Professor Robert Full. Our lab focuses on biomimicry and biomechanics. That is, we study how animals move and use that knowledge to develop technology to help improve people's lives. For example, my specific pro project involves studying cockroach motion to develop better search and rescue robots. If you've ever seen a cockroach, you'll know they're very good at moving, so we have a lot we can learn from them. The crowning jewel of VLSB is the T-Rex Oswald. Oswald is a cast of MOR555, one of the most complete T-Rex fossils found to date. Oswald was sent to us in a large crate, disassembled, unlabeled, and with no instructions. Professors, graduate students, and even undergraduate researchers had to work together to figure out how to fully assemble Oswald for us to see them in all their glory today. Fun fact, Oswald's original bones are currently on display in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. In addition to Oswald, there are 14 other fossil skeletons and 8 models of living animal skeletons publicly on display throughout the building. If you ever come to campus, see if you can find all of them. One of the prettiest buildings on campus is the Li Ka Shing Center for Biomedical and Health Sciences. Most students will be familiar with this building because it houses one of the campus's major lecture halls and is right next door to what is widely considered one of the best on-campus cafes, Pat Brown's. Deeper inside the building, however, 
There are countless state-of-the-art labs studying biology and neuroscience. Some of the major features of the building are the stem cell research being done in the California Institute of Regenerative Me Medicine, the four Tesla fMRI machine in the Henry H. Wheeler Jr. Brain Imaging Center. Side note, there's an MRI of my heart that I got taken when I volunteered to be a subject in my friend's research project, and the animal facility which houses many of the campus's research animals, including anything from mice to monkeys to bats. Speaking of bats, my primary research project as an undergraduate has been in the Yartsev lab studying the neuroscience of fruit bats in this very building. Fruit bats are an incredibly cool and undervalued model for neuroscience for a variety of factors, including 3D navigation, language-like vocalizations, and complex social interactions. In my research, we found that when fruit bats interact socially, their brainwaves synchronize. This finding does make sense, because in order to make social interactions go smoothly, individuals need to observe their social partners and think about how they might react to different behaviors. But more explanation needs to be done to understand the specific significance of this synchronization. So our last stop for today is actually going to be the, the Innovator Genomics Institute, or IGI, building, which is located in the northwest corner of campus. The IGI was co-founded by Professor Jenna Cardona in 2014 with an aim to sort of bring together UC Berkeley and UC San Francisco researchers that are all interested in genome engineering technology. So the projects conducted by IGI researchers have been focused broadly on, on four main topics. There's been improving human health, developing a sustainable agriculture, advancing genome engineering, and studying the public implications of genomic editing. As a COVID-19 testing facility, of course, IGI has also shifted its focus to improve research on new coronavirus uh, diagnostics and therapeutics as well. Now, IGI's president and co-founder, uh, Professor Jennifer Dona, was, as you may be aware, uh, recently awarded a Nobel Prize in Chemistry with her colleague Emmanuel Chapentier for the transformative work in, in developing CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which is sort of this genome editing system that enables the removal and addition of genes at you know, precise locations in a DNA sequence. Their, their initial groundwork set forth you know, and helped drive a lot of very groundbreaking discoveries and, and manipulations of this CRISPR technology that you know, have spawned quite a bit of, of, of research focus and given us as, as engineers a lot of power. Now, IGI is also home to the Leroux Lab, which is led by the bioengineering assistant professor Liana Leroux. Uh, the Leroux Lab utilizes computational and molecular biology to sort of further their understanding of how gene expression is affected by gene regulation during the steps of RNA processing and translation. So now, if any of these research topics has, has piqued your interest at all, I, I highly recommend that you search for the IGI website, and on there you'll find an abundance of different interactive and educational resources, as well as more information about the many research projects being conducted at the moment. Now, this includes all of the labs that we've mentioned here, Professor Jennifer Dowden and Professor Leroux, as well as you know, a whole host of others, including those that are not necessarily in the, the Innovative Genomics Institute building, but spread across, you know, in, you know, in, including in UC San Francisco or in other different lab sites. Thank you guys for joining us on, on this special campus tour of Berkeley. We, we hope that you guys enjoyed this virtual experience and you feel more excited about visiting these places in person one day. Um, it was an absolute pleasure for us to be your tour guides today, and we look forward to seeing you on campus for BioHSC in the near future.